We'll move on to the community board reports. Just to say at the outset that um, a, a number of community boards, I know, wish to raise the uh, question of the uh, smell that's emanating from the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and um, so I'm just going to say that this matter was dealt with uh, with a, um, a public presentation and uh, a um, uh, well a deputation really from from a community member from one of the neighbouring suburbs uh, and um, at yesterday's Three Waters Infrastructure and Environment Committee. And uh, there was a response given uh, from the head of Three Waters, uh, Helen Bowman, to the uh, to to the um, deputation. And uh, you know, I felt that that they, that was uh, that's well worth referring to. Um, uh, what the key issue that was raised was the question of the importance of communication and uh, reaching out to the Bromley Linwood area west of the plant and uh, the New Brighton and South Shore areas um, uh, when we get westerlies. Uh, but of course, the, it, it is um, able to be smelt in different parts of the city as we heard from community board chairs. So I know it has been a topic of conversation at, at, at a number of community boards. So uh, just to say that um, we will uh, be up, upping the the that will concentrating our communications efforts in those um, areas of direct impact, but also uh, recognising that a broader area of um, of of impact, uh, perhaps not so frequent in other parts of the city, very much a noticeable um, odour. And I think under under those uh, situations, we'll be uh, sending out a. Um, a memorandum to the community boards, the wider community boards, about the odour and what is being done to to mitigate that. So thanks very much to all of the community boards in advance uh, for your um, presentations today. I I'm actually going to move the receipt of them because uh, I didn't do this at the end and um, I'm just looking to see who's the first person, Pauline Cotter. So Pauline Cotter is the seconder. So if I forget to put the resolution at the end, I've got a mover and a seconder and I can just simply be nudged at the appropriate time. So we'll move on first to um, Carolyn Potter um, and Deputy Chair Lee Sampson from Waihoro Spraden Kashmir Community Board. Uh, kia ora tātou and thank you um, Leanne for having us. Lee will be talking to two of the issues that we're going to raise, none of which are um, urgent or anything, no, no parties, and I will be talking to the other three. Uh, first up is the, um, um, oh, th those are, we can skip through those, except we, we had a grant of 5,500 to Rally Resource Centre for a shed on its property. Rowley is outgrowing its um, current home, but um, we have to think about that for the future. Innovating streets projects. We had um, Beckenham and Selwyn Street as innovating streets projects, and the blokes um, waited for um, people from Addington, children from Addington School to come along who have participated in the discussion on putting up these things to make that this corner section uh, cheaper, oh, sorry, safer safer and we were photographed with um, Innovating Streets children um, and thank goodness that wasn't the photograph that was chosen and it was really good of the blokes to wait around so that the kids could discuss where exactly these would go and the kids enjoyed having this change to their street um, making it safer for themselves. Next slide. This is Lee. Oh, Morena team from a slightly soggy but now sunny Kashmir. <laughs> Um, this is, um, or this was a Centennial Hall. Um, obviously sad to see a facility like this uh, go. Um, it's not a decision that the board... I can't hear you, Lee. Um, you've, you've gone offline. I can't see you, so I don't know whether that means you actually literally have gone offline and I need to hand back to um, Carolyn. Still showing us there. He's still showing us there according to my advice. 
but I can't hear you. Okay. Shall I carry Leanne, on? Yeah, no, that's Leanne better. doesn't know that we can hear and she can't. No, I can hear you now. Okay. Can you hear us, Lee? Yes, I can hear. I can hear Lee now. Lee, she's Maybe gone. Checking that because we can all hear each other, but Lee can't hear us. I can no. hear you all. Can staff hear us? Yes. Uh, everyone can hear everyone except for Leanne, who can't hear I anyone. I can but hear you. That. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that, that leave us? Can you hear me? I wonder if Andrew could take Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah so happy to, happy to do that. They can't hear me. Um, so, Carolyn, if you want to continue with the presentation... Excuse me. Sure... Lee, we can hear Lee. No, just... So is there anyone in the chamber, though? Because this will be being recorded it's as well. It's me that can't hear them. Or just, uh, if we could pause them. Andrew, are yep. you able That's, to have a small meeting? Should, should, should we, Mary, some advice. Should we adjourn the meeting yes. so we find out what the issue is and then restart? Yep. Yes, yes. that'd be good. Yep. All right. So um, maybe we'll take a... A, a ten. A, what do you think we need? Maybe a ten minute adjournment minutes. to resolve the five. Five minutes adjournment. All right. So um, at ten thirty seven, we'll adjourn the meeting for five minutes until ten forty two. Thank you. Sometimes.
to go again. Uh, the um, gremlins in the system have been repaired, and I will now hand back to Lee Sampson, who will continue to talk about Centennial Hall, an image that um, reflects the past. Thank you. Yeah, OK, thank you, Leanne. Um, I'm not sure where we got up to before the gremlins kicked in, but I'll just... Um, yep, the, we, um, the Centennial Hall has been demolished over the next two weeks. Um, we got a Newsline article out two weeks uh, two weeks ago just to keep our community along with the journey. Uh, not a decision that was taken lightly. Again, we've had an asset that's been closed for 10 years. Um, had, we had no end user, so um, yeah, decision not taken lightly by the asset owner or the community board. Um, but we are retain, we have retained some of the elements of the internal of the structure, and we've also moved the memorial plaque to just two to three hundred metres down to Pioneer. So it's nice that we've actually retain some connection and um, with with the facility but yes yeah, certainly certainly sad on some levels but i'll i'll um yep um i'll move you back to caroline for the next item if i can i just note that many of you may remember centennial hall from the film picking order which also had an ex chairperson of our community board in the film and this was the location of all the um chalk competitions um and guinea pigs our, our community board is firmly of the belief that if we are looking at qualifying matters and exclusions under enabling supply of housing and supporting as our board does, for example, the protection of character, we are strongly of the view that the council understands that such provisions will exacerbate the difference in value and amenity of, for example, those suburbs where character is protected and those suburbs, like, for example, Eddington and Straden, on whose common boundary this building sits astride, buildings sit astride, and before it's too late, sets developers of those areas' contributions aside to spend on green space, trees, walking and adventure spaces, and getting rid of things like deep ditch gutters for the residents of those areas so that for the residents of those areas, there is some surety that they will benefit from the building, the giant buildings that are going are in, up and down their streets. This is our opinion, this is in our opinion, absolutely vital. Further, when character is a mitigation, we should press on government that the old beautiful houses in Eddington and Spraydon are as worthy of those as those in Pendleton and Beckenham and worth saving in the singular for future generations. Thank you. Yes, Caroline, can I just, uh, just, yep, just for a minute, ahead. it's just, just to say that what we're, what we're finding on a community level is that the, the... Gone again. Our residents just just seeing no life in the demon and have made a fundamental we've half the development contributions uh, more or less crudely. Um so we're not investing in infrastructure upgrades to street renewals. I think we just they're experiencing denser development. So um I think there's an opportunity coming up with the housing supply um bill to refresh our development contributions policy again. So I really think we need to really have a good look at that, that and how we work with our communities, um, especially where we're, you know, the Spradens, the Edgewares, the St Albans, where we're experiencing significant in full development. So that's, thank you, Carolyn. Thanks. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. You're, Lee, it's your turn. Oh, OK. And we're going to move on to, um, it's a story of three roundabouts recently. Uh, you might be tired of me talking about roundabouts, but we've got, we're currently looking at St. Martin, St. Torius, uh, Dias Plas, um, Colombo, and also Barrington, uh, Kashmir. So we're just about to go out to consult consultation for some, some improvements here. Um, so just to make it a lot easier for pedestrians to reverse this roundabout. So, yeah, we'll be going out for consultation in the next week or two. So I'll just I'll move on again, Carolyn, if we can. Yep. At our last meeting, we were very pleased to hear from another group set up along the Power Aho River, the Hesca, the Friends of the River Law Esplanade Reserve. This was Finn Jackson and has a twin brother called Anzac, who have come to our board over the years on various environmental issues and are the sons of an ex-journalist who spent a lot of time critis being critis critical of council. 
This volunteer group joins many others who are working to improve water health and increase plantings. They include the Friends of Ernie Clark, the Friends of Farnley, the Friends of the Ashgrove Reserve, the Friends of Purau, King George V Reserve, and many more, and also include the Summit Road Society and the Port Hills Trust Board who are doing such great work on the hills. We want to acknowledge, acknowledge the fantastic work of the Apaoho Heathcote River Network and our council parks team for all that they do to support the volunteers along the river. When we add up along the Heathcote River, the many agencies that are there to plant indigenous trees, foster the bird life and improve the quality of the river, we're extremely lucky in the South of Christchurch. Thank you. And that's for me, me finished, Leanne. That, that's fantastic. Thank you. And um, that's uh, the end of your uh, presentation time. So thank you very much for um, going to all of that trouble and um, presenting to us. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, Tori Peden, um, Chair of the Te Pātaka o Rākai Hautu, Banks Peninsula Community Board. Tori. Morena. Morena. Morena, Mia and um, councillors. Um, I'll start with the first slide, please. Um, the board was pleased to approve the Takamatua Stream Esplanade Reserve Landscape Plan recently. With this approval, the Takamatua Environmental and Kaiti Akitanga Committee can also move forward with funding applications. The board also approved a grant of $2,000 from its discretionary response fund to the Pigeon Bay Hall Committee towards the purchase of a ride on lawn mower. In addition, the board agreed to make a submission to the Ministry for Primary Industry um, in support of the extension of the Little, Littleton Harbour Whakaraupo Matai Tai Reserve. The board wrote um, of its support of Ta Hapu Naki, Nati Fiki, um, Renanga's application to extend the reserve um, to include the outer harbour adjoining the eastern boundary of the existing reserve as shown in the image here. Next slide. Little River residents, um, adults and children alike have embraced the opening of the Little River Heritage Park playground and the exciting new play space for our tamariki. The upgrade space and new equipment are a welcome addition to our community and already a wonderful success. My own children eagerly tested out the uh, new slides and space shuttle spinner, swings and many other features of playground. Um, the planning and completion of this project showcase how collaboration, partnership and hard mahi can see a shared goal come to fruition and result in the community asset that will be treasured for many years to come. The board would like to offer its sincere thanks to council staff, the Little River Wairua Community Trust and our invested community members who made this vision a possibility. Next slide. The Chartres Bay Yacht Club offers activities that provide fundamental training and opportunities to practice water safety to adults, youth and schools. Um, our board was happy to support this work and approve discretionary response funding to employ a coach and train six junior coaches, all of whom within 15 years of age. The short film showcases some of these young coaches in action as they provide coaching sessions to some of the new and younger participants who are keen to learn the basics and test their skills. It was shown as part of Children's Day in March this year after a school survey indicated that many of the participants were interested in learning how to sail. No doubt the club has helped create and encourage many future sailors. Someone can press play on that. Our mast, our spread, and the boom, and our 
main sheet, which can pull the sail in and out. Uh, the hull of the boat, which is the main part of the boat. And the centerboard. Stops us from going sideways. Very much. It's fantastic. I think we've got one yeah, more it's fantastic. slide, but very quickly. Yeah. Thank you. I will be very quickly. I'll just cover the last point of that. Um, underway um, is, sorry, uh, mid March to Ahu Pataki Board um, signed a deed for the park, given the opportunity to form an incorporation and register for charitable status. Um, and the last bit is I'd also like to share. That request for the proposal for the former Godly House site was released in early March and is generating a great deal of interest from within the community and professional businesses alike. So that is our brief update from the board. Uh, kia ora, Tori, and, and thank you very much. I always love those videos uh, in the middle of presentations, so thank you very much for the time that you've taken in presenting to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, Kelly Barber from Waitai Coastal Burwood Community Board. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so this is uh, our report to council for April. Um, first, just wanted to highlight the decisions made under delegation. So we've got a couple of par days today, uh, which will be coming uh, before you, uh, items 12 and 13 on your agenda today. So the first one is... Uh, there's a small link road between the Preston's Park subdivision and the um, and Burwood Road, uh, which will be a, a nice second outlet uh, for the uh, huge subdivision of Preston's Park, uh, which is badly needed. Uh, a unanimous decision at our end, um, and also a slow speed uh, neighbourhood uh, for Avondale. Um, uh, people there have had uh, lots of issues with um, enthusiasts and cars driving a bit quick. Um, and this will be the first step, I guess, in slowing uh, them down. And I'm sure we'll be looking at, uh, at uh, traffic calming measures down the track. Um, so we also approved some no stopping restrictions at Burwood Road. And um, we're also now uh, doing a trial of uh, running our, uh, starting our community board meetings at 5 p.m. to allow people who work to have um, more access to those meetings. Next slide, please. So um, this is a, a, re a real feel good, um, uh, I guess, item. Uh, so um, we've had uh, the North Beach um, Residents Association, a very active group in our community, uh, with support of the uh, North Beach Surf Lifesaving Club and the council, uh, get together and uh, arrange 
for uh, some beach wheelchairs and an access mat. Um, and um, this container, um, which is a 10 foot uh, a shipping container, I, I didn't even realize that they existed in this size, but uh, so this houses the, uh, the wheelchairs and the mat. Um, and I think we have a little video, just a 40 second video to show you of what these items uh, look like. Um, is someone able to uh, put that up? No, maybe not. Oh, sorry. Oh, I have a sorry. No, sorry, there isn't a video here. Sorry, there's. I don't know how that's happened, but it's not. Yeah, it might be the original when we see through, but uh, such as life. Yeah, it's uh, it's been in the news and in the media. Um, yeah, it's really uh, the picture tells a, a a million words in this, or the video would tell a million words in this case. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, we haven't got it. Uh, but so these are large uh, wheelchairs that you can actually take out into the surf, and they access the beach via a mat. Um, yeah. Anyway, such as life. It's uh, yeah a great initiative. If we just move on to the next slide. Is, is that the, oh yeah, you've got going, yeah, right, we go. cheers. I'm, I'm going to see yeah, if we so can just, find the video, so carry on. Yeah. So um, this is um, just some pictures of the Ascot Hub, uh, which is managed by another very active group in our community, the Eastern Community Sport and Recreation uh, Outfit. Um, they've done some extra work in just uh, getting the patio and um, um, and ramps uh, concreted, um, just a, a much more user-friendly uh, area now. Um, and there's some outdoor lighting was installed as well. Uh, this was the former Ascot Golf Club um, headquarters, which is now a, a community facility. Uh, so we're really pleased about those improvements made to, uh, to that particular facility. So moving on to the next slide. So uh, on Saturday, 12th of March, uh, a few of you came down. I know uh, Mayor Dalzell was, was there for the opening of the uh, first of the Otakaro Avon River Corridor landings. Um, a couple of city councillors came down as well. I think Sarah was there and Yanni. Um, and uh, we had a small ceremony and a community picnic um, was held afterwards. I think Sarah um, so was there as well. <laughs> yeah, did I, sorry, did I not mention you, Sarah? Um, yeah, so um, yeah, it was a it was a, a really good uh, wee opening. Um, the landing is funded by the uh, Christchurch uh, Earthquake Appeal Trust, um, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's a, sort of, I guess, one of the early projects in the regeneration of the red zone. Um, one of the cool things about it was that we, we didn't have actually anyone to officially open the uh, facility, so we all decided to do it uh, as a group. And, uh, and opened it um, for the residents of the of the city on uh, mass, which was uh, which I thought was quite nice. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's looking absolutely fantastic, and I'd encourage you to pop down and have a have a visit. It's uh, it's beautiful. Right, next slide. Well, so that's it. But there, there is just one other uh, issue that I wanted to raise, which um, just one thing I wanted to mention. Um, it's not often that our whole community board uh, is contacted by members of the public on a particular issue, but each of us has field, uh, fielded numerous calls of complaint and frustration with a small group of uh, people who have decided to uh, camp in the red zone. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen reports in the media. Um, yeah, the residents in the area have reported uh, chopping down of trees and assault uh, on media and verbal abuse of people walking dogs and toileting in the bushes. Uh, so sort of one very unsavoury photo of a, of a local uh, who'd walked their dog and the dog had rolled in human feces. And this sort of behaviour in uh, public land is just unacceptable and the community would really like to register their frustration uh, with, with that activity going on and what essentially is a, is a public area. So... Um, yeah, we'd just like to register our frustration with that. Um, just, just saying that it's not actually technically a public area at this stage. So, um, but I'll, I'll, I won't say more than that. I'll just hand over to Mary just to comment briefly on that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <coughs> just uh, can report that our parks team 
uh, working closely with um, social service agencies, the police and the occupiers to try and resolve the situation as quickly as possible and as simply as possible. Um, we are aware it's uh, frustrating for uh, residents and people that walk in that area, but we are doing our best to resolve this uh, uh, quickly and simply. Thank you. Look, thank you very much. And um, you, we've come to the end of the time. We'll, we'll find the video and circulate it to councillors so that they can um, have a look at it independently. But I know that um, most of us have actually seen it on social media and on Newsline, and um, it's just such a great community story. So well done. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, thank you. So we'll move on to um, Bridget Williams, uh, Chair of uh, Waimairo, uh, Fendleton Waimairo um, uh, Hewitt Community Board. Tēnā koutou katoa, so morena everyone. Um, so yeah, just a short report from us today, highlighting just some of the decisions we've made under delegations and some highlights. So first of all, we've approved road names for a new subdivision at 40 Johns Road, um, Packers Lane, Pit Lane, Harvest Lane, the site was previously an orchard, uh, and also approved no stopping restrictions on Royal, um, Royal Bell Ave and approved a right way easement on 129 Graham's Road. So moving on to the next slide, um, this is this is really fantastic. So culture galore. So although the event was unable to go ahead this year, one of the objectives this year was to look at developing a directory of the groups and the organisations involved in the event. So this is in response to feedback from the community that it would be helpful to go beyond the idea of culture galore being just a one day event and to provide access to more information about the various organizations and the services they provide. So this directory is now available on the council's website. It's a fantastic resource and I recommend you check it out. Moving on to the next slide. So our local community development advisors at Fendleton have been developing a series of training sessions and speakers to assist with supporting the capacity of community organisations in the Fendleton Waimati Hewitt area. Topics have been identified through engagement with local groups and the first workshop of the speaker series took place in March, which was Thrive and Revive, Managing Capacity and Reducing Overwhelm. The three hour workshop took place on Zoom over two separate sessions and it was delivered through Mental Health Education and Resource Centre, MHER, sorry, MHERC, and facilitated by Marina Shearer. Our participants learned how to reduce being overwhelmed by assessing and managing their values, workload, behavioral styles, and personal capacity, and approximately 30 people attended. So I just wanna say that these training sessions, um, they are, for, you know, they're free for, um, for local groups and they're going really well. And then onto the next slide. So you may recall us mentioning this before, the public toilets at Bishop Mall are pretty disgusting and the local community has been asking for new toilets for a long time. This is one of our board plan priorities and although we were unsuccessful in getting funding through the LTP for new toilets, we are working together with the community and other organizations to upgrade the existing toilets. Uh, this is a real collaborative community project which, which involves local residents, the Bishopdale Regeneration Project Group, City Care, Student Volunteer Army, the Bishopdale Men's Shed, local businesses and others. The floor of the toilets was resurfaced a few weeks ago and now the design concepts are being considered. The idea is to make the toilets an attraction for the mall area. So I thought, we, yeah, we would finish on a light note and um, in the next slide, we've got one of the concepts. <laughs> so this here is the throne room. Um, yeah, it's one of the design concepts being considered for the toilets. And as you can see, obviously there's a, um, a medieval theme to the design. So that is our report and happy to take any questions or comments. Right, thank well, you. thank you. You've left room for questions. And I mean, I'm sure the throne room, it, um, you know, <laughs> what a trick. <laughs> so um, has anyone got any questions? I can't see councillors very clearly, so no? 
Okay, look, th thank you, Bridget. But probably probably just a comment, Leanne, that that's just one of many, many options. So don't, yeah. don't. <laughs> Oh, no, I've, I've, you've won me over, hands down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Look, um, Jimmy, it's we've 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 really I've, we had a minute and we haven't now, so um, I'll just move on to the next item. Um, thanks very much, uh, Bridget. That's great. Uh, the next one is uh, um, the Waipuna Hallsville Hornby Rickerton Community Board and um, uh, Mike Mora, Chair. Thank you. Sure. Um, Leanne and uh, councillors, and thanks very much for the opportunity to present to you this morning. May I just say at the start that I would really appreciated the um, presentation by the, the, um, the, the three students. I thought that was absolutely wonderful and um, all proud of them. So moving on, what have we got next? Oh, part A, the two part A's, yes, the dedicated road reserve and road depot. Um, that was pretty straightforward. <clears throat> and the troop drive, wide, Waitley Ave, and safety improvements is very, very well received. So we're, we thank um, we thank the staff for, for for that, and look forward to that being put in place. And uh, road names under, dele <coughs> under delegation also, uh, Wincops Road, Light Mood Road, and Sutherlands Road, Gamut Drive. So anyway, the troop <coughs> Whiteley have uh, safety improvements and discretionary response funds. We've um, given money to the Hornby Primary School and Brackenridge Services Limited, and um, Youth Development Fund for, for Marty Kirikiri, to, uh, to participate in the Australian Junior Age Golf Championships on the Gold Coast of Australia. So we also made funds available for Bridget Coatland towards um, and together in Noodleham Park. We know what Noodleham Park is, don't we? Muldoon spelt back backwards. And, um, and the Templeton Residents <coughs> um, Association towards a community garden stall. Next slide, yes, um, this is very exciting. An update on our community board pro plan priorities and the hydrotherapy fall has been added to the scope of the Hornby Community Library. And we really thank the, the community support and, um, and the external funding that's been, been raised through, um, through uh, Rotary, et cetera, for this project. Very much appreciated by the community and I can't wait to go for a swim in there. And Vicky Reserve Playground has recently been upgraded with a new slide. And um, that's, that's, um, that's a lovely little reserve. So we're really pleased to see that there. And Branston Park baseball, basketball court upgrade. Now this is done to um, to try and encourage the um, um, female participation in um, in the bas in the basketball court. So that's really um, been much appreciated, and uh, we're looking forward to the local um, gators coming in there. So that's that's very much appreciated, and this is an exciting community led project as well. Um, need a buddy and it's just going to be very very interesting when you see the um, the statistics of, um, of what's who's been able to receive help from the community groups through this COVID um, time of the COVID um, isolation period and with people being sick including our family we've always we've all had COVID and we came through the other side so and just thanks to everybody for the support that they've been giving, not only us, but um, the wider community as well. Next slide, please. <laughs> and this is the um, council owned properties at 151153 Gilbertthorpe's Road. And just um, following on from our, um, from Satali's um, presentation to the 
to the council this morning. It's um, it's something that um, we're really looking forward to as uh, a satisfactory outcome from this um, and try and hold halt the sale of this um, building if we possibly can in any way, shape or form because there is definitely um, a big community need for this in our area. So um, just yeah, watch this space and I am very, very sorry for the for the um, situation of the allowed it to get um, onto the for sale um, process. So um, we're, we're part of that as well. We did drop the ball a little bit on that, but anyway, we want to move on and upwards. Thank you. And um, thank you. And any questions? Well, we've come to the end of the time, or the, uh, we'll, we'll observe that um, we are very dependent on community boards letting us know when there are issues in their local communities. We, we can't be aware um, across the board as a council. We, we, we are here as a council to look across the city, and, but we could not do our job um, if we can't you know, rely on community boards to bring to our attention these um, uh, local community matters. And uh, we, we always uh, listen to community boards um, uh, in the first instance uh, when it comes to um, future use of buildings that might go on the disposal list um, in the LTP process, but that, that's that's just a statement. It's not to designed to um, encourage any debate at all. So we'll take that offline, um, and um, I'm I'm now seeking a bit of background to the whole issue. So thanks, Mike. That's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And we'll move on thank to. You very much. Thank you, and we'll move on to um, Alexandra Davids, uh, Waikora Linwood Central Heathcote Community Board. Thanks so much and kia ora everyone. Um, I am just going to start with our, oh, not this, um, I'm going to start with our Part A2 Council, which um, as you all know is the Hadley Park North Tennis Club New Floodlights. Um, that is item 10 today on your agenda. Um, we would like to acknowledge Chris Kissling and Anne Dingwall for their deputation on behalf of the Christchurch Civic Trust to this item. And while they did bring up some issues, um, they were not against the floodlights. Um, I'm sure you all have questions for staff when this item comes up in the meeting. Now, the board are in support of the floodlights and have also asked for another clause to be added to include an automatic timer for the lights to ensure that they are off by 8 p.m. in the evening, just in case people forget. So that is our recommendation for the floodlights. Um, moving on now to the Sumner Esplanade seating. That is our next slide. Thank you. Um, back one. Sorry, thank you. Okay, um, I'll just talk to it anyway. Um, we wanted to, so yeah, that one. Thank you. Um, we wanted to bring to the attention of the council the seating or lack of uh, along the Esplanade in Sumner. We are all aware that Sumner is a destination location for our city and walking the Esplanade is something many of us have done and do. It has been noted that the seating along the Esplanade is far from functional and as you can see from the pictures, there, have been, there has been a huge lack of maintenance leading to completely unusable seating. Um, so we have requested staff advice on getting this issue resolved. Moving on to our next slide, uh, Boulder Bay. The board is pulling together a working party to look at managing the difficulties they are having in Boulder Bay. Um, one of the issues is not having a public toilet available. And the impact of this is people very unfortunately um, being caught short, um, leaving the inevitable pretty gross cleanups in the area. Um, we have suggested the installation of an eco-friendly toilet in the area um, would be hugely beneficial. Um, the board have also discussed using some of the funds that are generated from the batches there to help um, try and mitigate some of the issues that are happening in that area. Um, on to our next slide, please. Um, the Apawaho Lower Heathcote River Guidance Plan. So consultation on the Lower Apawaho Heathcote River Guidance Plan 
um, which covers the area from the Apara Road Bridge to the Ferry Mead Bridge, opened on the 22nd of March and runs until the 19th of April. Uh, the board really want to thank the working party that has been working collaboratively to come up with this document. And from it, we are looking forward to seeing some tangible and effective actions to aid in the health of our rivers. So if anybody would like to check that out, we would really recommend that. Um, on to our next slide now. Um, as we have already heard this morning in the meeting, um, we have discussed the sale of alcohol um, and the harm minimization amendment bill. Wayne Hawker, one of our local residents, spoke to the board regarding the private members bill presented by Chloe Swarbrick um, earlier this week. Um, and through the years, the board have supported the community in advocating for most our most vulnerable affected peoples by alcohol related harm. And while we are not fully aware of the details of the bill, um, have agreed to show support for the principles of the proposed private members bill in its early stages. Um, and we would like to thank Mr. Hawker for presenting to us on the issue and bringing it to our attention in the early stages. Um, the dog control in the area. So the board have requested staff to erect simpler signage around the estuary to advise that dogs are not permitted. Um, the board are also requesting staff for advice for Sumner that acknowledges the issues of the swimming beaches and encourages dog owners to be mindful that beaches are now swimming beaches and to not let dogs run free. The board have also agreed to request staff on undertaking a small review of the dog control bylaw to update the Sumner Beach dog control areas and for staff to include Sumner Beach areas when the dog control bylaw is reviewed. Um, our slow neighbourhoods, um, the board have been working with staff in identifying slower speed neighbourhoods and have approved Scarborough Hill as one of these areas. So we have revoked the 50 kilometre per hour streets um, and we have dropped them to 40 kilometres for consistency. Um, and our last slide, which is the wrong slide, so we can get rid of the slides now if that is okay. Um, I just wanted to quickly bring up the Wollstone Community Centre building. Um, the board have granted the lease to the Wollstone Community Centre to Tawaka Inua School. Now the building has been left unused since the end of last year and the granting of the lease supports the future use of the former Wollstone Community Centre to be utilised by Tawaka Inua School as a meeting place to support the varied needs and priorities across the local school community by providing a separate space to engage with parents and children support services, agencies, and other wider community, uh, and making it available for members of the public to utilize when not in use for school purposes. Um, and we wanna to thank Tawaka Inua for taking on this responsibility on behalf of their community. And um, just to finish, we um, wanted to um, acknowledge the wastewater plant issues. Um, the board would also like to thank uh, resident Vicki Walker for addressing the City Council yesterday in regards to the wastewater plant and the pungent smells coming from it. We know this is never an easy thing to do and her advocacy for this community is really valued. Um, we would also like to acknowledge the impacts of this as we have over the years due to many different odours that have affected this community for such a long time. Um, and for this community, this is just another thing on top of their everyday issues. Um, and thank you to other boards for bringing this up today as it just um, gives more importance to this community that is being hit hardest by at the moment. Uh, kia ora. Thank you so much. Uh, kia ora, and thank you very much, Alexandra. Um, and we'll just move on to the, to the final uh, uh, community board one. And, and uh, um, I actually think the... the, the um, Part A reports are actually quite relatively quick, so I might just whip through those and then and then we'll um, uh, have a 10-minute break for morning tea. 
Um, so uh, I'd like to invite um, Deputy Chair Simon Britton. So Emma Norrish is an apology today uh, for the Waipapa Papanui Innes Community Board. Thank you. Thank you, Moraina Koto, and apologies from Emma for her absence today. Uh, if we could move to the next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, the slow speed neighbourhoods, surely I've got a separate slide for, so I'll come back to. Uh, the other report that's mentioned on that slide uh, was really a very technical reclassification of part of a stormwater reserve or a reserve for stormwater purposes in Belfast. And just what really wanted to highlight that the board would be supportive of a future delegation change. It was one of those decisions where we you know, it was required to come up to us, but really uh, would be much happier seeing staff deal with that in the future. Uh, yeah, and yeah, there's feedback on that um, in our minutes uh, from that meeting. Next slide, please. Uh, in Richmond this past month, uh, we've approved road renewals for part of Dudley, all of Nichols, and the northern part of Stapleton's Road. Uh, midway through decision making on that, uh, there were some concerns from the board on impact on street trees, and I really want to thank staff for being really responsive to us uh, and facilitating, uh, swiftly facilitating a site visit so that we could look at uh, the specific trees that were being impacted, understand the rationale behind the need to remove some trees. And there was also some information came back from staff clarifying that across six roads uh, that were being renewed in the area, uh, while 26 trees were being removed, 102 trees are being put back in. So we're uh, in that area well over uh, the council's two for one policy. So that was that was really helpful to get that information back. Uh, also acknowledging staff for uh, providing us some information, including a recent really detailed briefing on uh, surface flooding issues along Edgware Road. That's still a work in progress. Uh, we understand it's a network issue and there'll be some feedback uh, I, I believe coming to the three waters committee on that uh, it's having local impacts too so we're, we're as a board we're very very interested in how that develops uh, next slide please uh, the Shirley area um, this will come to a future board meeting the timing hasn't quite worked out to get it on your agenda today uh, but the board has supported a 30 kilometer an hour um, uh, oh sorry 40 slow neighborhood neighbourhood speed zone in Shirley. Uh, it's an area bounded by Shirley Road, Marshland Road, Hills, Akaroa, Briggs Road. Uh, we had some interesting discussions too on uh, potential future uh, reductions on Shirley Road itself in the area of Shirley Primary School. Uh, that'll come up as uh, Waka Kotahi NCTA works through the, the issues around speed limits outside schools. Next slide is uh, a really significant decision we were able to make this month around the Christchurch Regeneration Acceleration Facility, CRAF, uh, for Richmond. Uh, in the Richmond area, we have a $4 million program of work uh, that's now been approved at a program level, and that's been quite a journey. And there was uh, public consultation uh, across the area on uh, what was seen as issues there. Uh, and then a, a really detailed process working through options with staff. Uh, we could spend a lot more money uh, if we had it, of course. Uh, we've come up with what we think is a, is a really uh, landed on a really good place around that. Uh, there'll be now be some detailed design uh, undertaken and uh, there'll be public consultation on specific elements within that program as it moves through towards being implemented. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, We've had a youth audit uh, undertaken on uh, youth friendly spaces and places in Shirley. Uh, this was a an initiative of the Shirley Village project along with Youth Voice Canterbury. Uh, one of the sites that was chosen was 10 Shirley Road. Uh, we had some really good feedback from, uh, from that audit uh, and uh, thanks again to staff. Uh, we had a site visit with uh, input from park staff as well to look at some things we can do uh, or some things the board can support. Uh, in that area to uh, improve its amenity uh, for the general public uh, and out of that, uh, and particularly to support uh, the aspirations of the young people in that area. Next slide is in relation to Cranford Street and the connection, the Northern Arterial uh, connection through to uh, the CNC at QE2 Drive. We've had a number of members of the public raise concerns with us around different safety aspects of this. Uh, I've had some feedback from staff, uh, the image on your left, the shared path up Cranford Street there. Uh, there's a number of tweaks, I guess, to the implementation of that that are going to be undertaken. 
to uh, assist in uh, improving safety there, and particularly the, the risk of conflict between vehicles entering and exiting commercial properties along there uh, and people moving along the cycleway. Sorry, I was timing myself. One last slide. Uh, just acknowledging we've had uh, open forums, uh, a new initiative from the board this year in conjunction with changing the, uh, the rhythm and the timing of our board meetings, and we've had some really good input uh, from the local community coming uh, and some people speaking to us who uh, perhaps um, we haven't heard from before and haven't come to a boardroom to speak to us, but have been able to uh, access us uh, via this new format and we've been able to publicly uh, live stream those, of course, as, as well as having people coming in and speaking to us. Um, that's my slides. Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. And I mean, I, I guess that out of every disaster comes opportunity. And, and uh, um, this is uh, an example of how the community can engage in a different way. And I think we're still going to see a lot more of that after the after the things, um, after the, you know, influence of the pandemic is reduced. Yeah. <laughs> Look, thank you very much for your presentation um, this morning and thank you to all of the community board chairs. That's incredibly helpful. Um, I'm now going to put the motion, since I have a mover and a seconder, to receive the reports. Um, I'll put that motion. If you're in favour, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, no. So that's, um, that's uh, carried. Thank you very much. And we'll just quickly run through